Welcome back in, Trey Lowell here with Lowell Productions. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over exactly how I filmed and edited that recent video that you just watched. All right, so hopping up in our editor, let's go ahead and walk everyone through what we've got going on here. Try to scale up this timeline for you. First thing that you guys are gonna notice is we're going to start it off with the flag waving. Reason being behind this, really just a motion, obviously maybe puts two and two together for those out there that this might be golf. And bright sunny day, you can kind of see the course here, a little out of focus obviously, but it just sucks people in, that being that first shot. Underneath, we've got some high paced music, rock and roll, boom, it uh, cuts in. And then also below it, we've got some sound effects, the golf tournament. Uh, sound effects, which really is just going to be some ambient noise to then bring people into that environment. So now that we jump to cut number two, or shot number two, which is actually cut on this like kind of clapping. I'll actually play it back here. And then it cuts and it goes right into that hard uh, Hyde Park golf club, kind of like stone thing they've got going on for hole number three, which is a par four. We're using that shot to go ahead and connect the dots two and two that if you weren't sure with the golf flag, at least come that second shot, you are at least aware that we are about to be watching a golf video. Then we go ahead and move along. We've got all our sound effects or our sound design underneath. Nothing crazy here other than, like I said, that golf tournament to just bring people more into that environment, which is really just gonna be some wind and other things like that. Maybe even lawnmowers in the background, you name it. Then our third shot, which is going to be my father-in-law. And side note, neither none of them really wanted to be featured in the video, so that was one thing. If I was actually paid to be out there, I'd either bring an actor or I'd bring someone that was comfortable with 100% being seen. So a lot of these shots, I'm actually using hands, I'm using feet, very, you know, sh Varying the shots, but also making sure that you don't ever see a person in regards to their face. We're just using the others to connect the dots of the golfing experience. And right here we have him driving along in the cart. Obviously we have a little bit of the Hyde Park branding here. You got your little scorecard here. And then we roll into our fourth shot, which once again being cut on that clap. Now this is going to be a rack focus from a golf cart tire all the way to my father-in-law, still blurred in the background, all the way to the end, hitting the ball. And we added a nice little golf hit sound effect there to add a little bit more effect. These are gonna be little things that, whether your viewer really kind of like knows it or connects the knots, connects the dots that's going on. It's gonna be things that are really gonna to add to your production. So something like a little golf hit, timing it up nice, it's really just gonna drive home that particular shot. Which then, once we have him hitting, I just felt the need at this point, Hogan's Alley is a main focus or a really big, like, um, it's kind of like what Hyde Park has been famous for. So it was one shot that they wanted and a hole that they wanted. So I wanted to make sure that when I got the first chance that we were gonna jump into that. So our fifth shot, we're seeing a Hogan's Alley on the drone and we're doing a massive speed ramp that actually kind of ramps a little bit to the beat, coming in at 200% right off the bat. Then we're ramping up to 369%. And then we'll even scale it a little more. As we get out, we go to 591, 666, and then we go, 1600% and then because of the beat, which is right down here in the timeline, it does a boom. And that's where we actually then slow it down to 95%. Okay, all along still running our nice little sound design underneath of golf tournament. Tournament. Not getting too crazy here with actually changing the sound design in regards to kind of like the ambient noise and that you're hearing. Other than we've got golf hits, we've got the golf tournament and then here in just a minute, we'll do the golf putt in the cup. But we come out of Hogan's Alley, speed ramping, then into another drone shot. Really just kind of wanted to make it go out, something that was zooming out into another out. And this shot really was just a hole that they wanted us to highlight. Uh, when On the front end, one thing that they did do 
is when they gave me the scorecard, they gave me a couple of notes in regards to some of the key holes that they wanted me to focus on, and this happened to be one of those holes. Um, as far as the visual went, I just felt like a drone shot would get the point across, and it just somewhat felt like it cut nicely from that Hogan's Alley uh, zoom out to a little bit of a zoom out or a pull out on the drone here on this particular shot, which then brings us into, now, you might be wondering why do we go from a big wide drone shot into a nice tight, just seeing feet, a ball, and then right here in just a second, it's going to be hit. Now really that has everything to do with, this is when the music seems to change. And so what I'm trying to do is really tell the story that we're about to ramp up. My father-in-law hits that ball, you hear that sound design, and then Brown. It's cranking in. Boom. And then once again, cutting on that clap or cutting on that beat. Don't want to cut every single time on the beat. Uh, sometimes change it up, switch it up for your audience so it's not too predictable. But a lot of these shots are going to be cut to the beat. Um, this particular shot after my father-in-law hitting the ball, you see the geese or whatnot. And you might think that it's kind of silly that it starts with them, but this is really to just bring to life the course. Obviously, there's going to be nature out there. There's going to be the geese. Uh, if you golf, you've definitely seen that there are geese on a lot of courses. But then we do a little bit of a rack focus to this guy back here who's actually using his, looks like he's chipping it with a pitching wedge up onto the green. And I don't know. It just kind of humanized the whole course and everything like that. A little bit of a unique shot, really didn't mean to get it, uh, but obviously we did. And uh, I just found it kind of nice to have that um, because that is something, honestly, if you're on a golf course, you're probably gonna see and most of us are gonna be chipping onto a green anyways. So that leads us into our next shot after that. Okay, so we went from the chip onto the green into the putting on the green. Now, really, the reason that I put this putting shot in here, it's a staple, but also we went from like uh, big hits, big hits to chip. Now we're going into putting, now we're going on the green and we are now about to make it into the hole. So this is my niece here, she's actually putting. Da 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 da. Boom. And just so you guys can see it down here, we have golf putt into cup. And this to me really drives home and it's very light in the background, but I think it's definitely needed here. Let's go ahead and play it. Oh yeah. Hearing that ball go into that hole. It's just, I highly recommend when you do have an opportunity to add that sound effect, don't make it too over the top. Just make it there for those that are really paying attention. And it's just a nice ah, sound design. Had to add it for that shot. All right, and then music does a little bow, bow, hits a different little chord. So we cut on that, showing again Hyde Park Golf Club. Uh, this particular shot, while we've already seen the stone shot, this is a more up close, obviously gives you a lot of depth of the course. I loved how the colors came out in this particular shot. So that gave me a reason why I wanted to cut to it. Also, didn't want to use and abuse people hitting a ball over and over and over and over again. I just think it's good to kind of, if you can diversify those shots, not have everything being completely in action, obviously have some B-roll of the property outside of just drone shots. So that's why you can kind of see here when I'm cutting and things like that, it's to give as many visuals as possible and that feeling kind of absorb you into that environment, whether it be you hitting, whether you be chipping, whether it be putting, driving the golf course or driving the golf cart, or like even seeing some of the geese or the flag flying, or even some of these stone little things. All these shots coming in together are just kind of giving that individual viewer more and more insight into if you come and golf at Hyde Park, this is what you're getting yourself into. Coming out of that shot, which I really liked, we are going into another drone shot. This is just another one of the holes that they wanted to feature here. A lot of these shots, because they're big and wide, I'm not holding on them too, too long because you kind of can absorb everything that you need to see here. So we're doing this, doing this. Obviously, I've just got to call myself out on it too. When we roll into some of these shots, like I mentioned, a little bit overexposed, couldn't do too much other than I should have maybe gotten this shot a little bit later in the day. But unfortunately, it is what it is. I had my polarizer on there and it just wasn't enough. Probably could have stopped down a little bit more, but I think I would have crushed some of the shadows. 
but I just got to be honest with myself. You're always going to be learning. And uh, the shot didn't turn out too bad. I'm just kind of being harsh there. Then we roll into this awesome shot. My brother-in-law crushing the ball. Boom! I want to say this was shot at 60 frames per second. Maybe not. But either way, we're adding all the noise, all the sound, letting you guys see it, letting it rip, and then letting it hang for a few extra seconds or frames and then cutting into another beauty shot of the course and then in this section of the music and pretty much the portion we're about to cut out this is where i wanted to do a kind of like a rapid fire showing you a last couple clips before we then jump into the call to action the cta so we're seeing the water fountains boom 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 all right and this is one of my favorite shots while all right well let me explain this outro shot one, I wanted to kind of like figure a way out to intrigue the user and also be able to hang on a shot for a while. So this was one of the last shots I actually got with my drone at the end of the day. Like I said, the clouds, I could have done a little bit better, a little overexposed, but overall when I'm watching it back, it still looks really nice. We added some nice sound effects under there. We added their logo here. And literally all it is is the drone just going out or going, excuse me, going up, you're able to see a little bit of the course, but then you're also able to see Jacksonville downtown there. And then we added that sound design and it really just when you let it rip, you can hear that, you can hear that sound design just lightly in the background, the wind, the uh, like the birds and the crickets and stuff. And then the High Park logo, just nicely scaling in. Yeah. Okay. So we have walked through that roughly, uh, what is it, 34 second video. Like I mentioned earlier, the point of this video is really a social media piece of product, also something that could be used for their uh, website. I knew that I was gonna be in Jacksonville and I wanted the opportunity to impress this group, impress this company, and hopefully they would have me back in the future. Now there's no promises here, fingers crossed. I really hope they do. And I think if they like what they saw here, I am really gonna knock their socks off next time. But overall, it's one of those situations where I reached out to a friend knowing that I was gonna be in the Jacksonville area and one thing after another, wham, bam, there you go. Now, I'm very happy with how the overall product worked out. Uh, I do think that if I went back and I went back for money, you bet your butt a lot of those shots that I'm complaining about. I would probably either on day two or three of shooting, I would actually get the pickup shot to maybe replace those. A lot of times when I'm editing a project like this and it's a multi-day project, sometimes I'll actually go ahead and try to lay out what I'm thinking like night one, night two, you name it, if I really have the time and energy. That way that I can go ahead and start figuring out shots that I need to pick up. When you're kind of condensed to a really short shoot and kind of what you get is what you get, you're really just gonna have to roll with it. And like I said, super pumped with all of those. I like the audio, I like the visuals, a couple of shots overexposed, could have definitely got some more up close, but like I said, I really just had to work with what I had. Short amount of time, just my father-in-law, brother-in-law, and niece that really didn't want to be featured. But I am not making excuses. I am just telling you what the particular environment was, and this is the end result. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked with it.